Believe it's 931. And I told him, I said, I am already the owner. So it doesn't really matter. So. How much does she own? Huh? I was looking behind me there, so that was nearly bad. It's uh, a little past 930, so I'm calling the meeting to to order, and uh, we can have the invocation, Katie, appreciate it. this opportunity to gather that to gather together um, our friends and neighbors in this beautiful place that you have provided for us to live we ask that you be with us in powerful ways to uh, open our hearts and our minds to guide our conversations to give us clarity of purpose that we might do according to your will and thank you Lord for all of answering all of the prayers that have been uplifted to you for the for the wonderful soaking rains that you have provided for us. We ask all of this, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Before we do the pledge, I need to establish a quorum, which we have all five board members, uh, Maria Perkins, Bill Herman, myself, Dan Sullivan, Deborah Isaacs, and John Holt. Also present is Richard Lawrence, our executive officer, uh, Andrew Smolin, our CPA uh, comptroller, and Christina, our secretary. So we now can do the pledge. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we'll start as usual with the consent agenda. I think most people are pretty used to that. And so if there's anything on that consent agenda that any director would like to have removed off of it and set aside, this would be a good time to request that. Uh, hearing no such request, I would... Uh, Look for a motion to approve the minutes of our uh, last board meeting, July 18th. I noticed uh, on the agenda it says special board meeting. It was actually a regular board meeting. So you may want to make that change. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes. Second it. I, I can't understand you. I thought for the consent agenda, we go through all of this first and then vote on it at the same time, right? You're correct, yes. Okay. Uh, approval of the secretary's report. Would you like to give us that? I would, yes. Good morning. So I received several letters. Um, the ones that were, in that were received in June were not read. So I'm going to read those shortly. But um, any letter that's sent to the board will be read and, more importantly, answered. Um, so thank you to everyone who takes time to write your suggestions. While, while I do reserve the right to provide a synopsis, I also reserve the right to omit letters of personal attacks to board members and employees. Your feedback is important, but let's also remember that the people who volunteer and are paid to work on Fort Issues deserve respect and to be treated as you would like to be treated. Thank you for your understanding. With that, I'll address letters from the suggestion box. These are the ones that were provided in June, late June, and were not read at the July meeting. Maria Perkins works for us members, so she needs to be available also. She was observed driving her vehicle with her child on her lap, steering the car. She left the activity center. I have the time and date logged. Um, I, am, I read this because I do, I do want to respond to this. I do not work for members. I do not receive payment for my time in my volunteer position. I do, however, represent the membership 
and the membership's interests. Um, then there's two others that are from June as well. And one of them says, I think the dues need to be raised as long as money is spent wisely. And then the other one is, I would like to encourage the RV park to be improved upon. I live across the street from the RV park. And to answer that one, we have an RV committee who is working hard to make recommendations to the board regarding improvements and policy. I am looking forward to their report. Then lastly, I received a lengthy letter that discusses topics ranging from suggestions on ways to generate income to requests for information to suggestions for amenities for children and families. It is too lengthy to read at once in my report, but I will answer them via my Facebook page and some in future board meetings as I get the answers. There are a total of 16 points in this letter, which is why I'm not reading all of it right now. And that is all that is in my report. Thank you. And we move to uh, Debbie for the treasurer's report. Our July uh, bank balances, uh, Texas Community Bank credit card account, $28,337.20. Our Texas Community Bank checking account, $8,891.47. Our Texas Community Bank Money Market Account, $2,564.61 for a total of uh, 39,793.28 in the Texas Community Bank. The Del Rio Bank and Trust General Fund Account, $98,800.24. All these that I'm reading right now are strictly the Del Rio Bank and Trust. The payroll account, $1,405.42. The restricted fund, $409,604.02. The Los Morris account, $956.50. The historical building preservation fund, $18,645.53. And then the hail damage repair fund, $24,185 dollars and 20 cents for a grand total of five hundred and ninety three thousand three hundred ninety dollars and nineteen cents on our bank transfers for the month of july we and these are reconciled uh figures here we uh, transferred $73,085.51 from the Texas Community Credit Card Account to the Texas Community Checking Account for operating expenses. And $63,000 was transferred from the Bank and Trust General Account to the Bank and Trust Payroll Account for a total of $136,085.51 for the July operating expenses. Thank you, Debbie. And we now will move to the executive officer's report. Richard. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I tell you this morning, rather than my take up much time with uh, um, a report, I would like to hand the uh, report over to Mr. Andrew Smullen. To all of you in the audience, I don't think that you have met Mr. Andrew Smullen. He is now our comptroller. He is a certified public accountant, and he has forensic accounting credentials as well, all of which will come in very handy for Fort Clark's benefit. And so I would like you, please, welcome him, because we certainly do need him. Now, I will say he's been here less than three weeks, but I expect him to know it all by now. That's plenty of time. I'll tell you what I do know so far. Um, it's my pleasure to address this board, Mr. Chairman, and the members. I have uh, enjoyed the warmth of your welcome. Everybody's been very friendly so far. <laughs> uh, I'm very impressed with the way that the staff has handled um, the situation and held things together. And hopefully, with if I can bring a professional and disciplined approach with guidance and encouragement to them, 
Uh, their talent and dedication will be harnessed towards a better work product. And what do I mean by a better work product? Um, I can see already several areas that, uh, where we can make a difference. Uh, we've been using a bookkeeper from a CPA firm on a part-time basis, and I would say very part-time, um, to come in and close the books for the month and do the month-end adjustments. And of course, I'm not going to be part-time at this job, so hopefully having more hours um, from me will be the first major difference that you will see. Um, the big things that I'm looking at are systems, our membership services system, um, which covers uh, operations and accounting. Um, it's an older system and it serves the purpose, but how well it serves the purpose is something I'm going to look at and see if it doesn't serve the purpose as well as we might like if there are alternatives to it. It's a very specialized system, so I can't guarantee we get something that's absolutely perfect. We would find something that's absolutely perfect as a replacement. The payroll systems, um, like, likewise, I'm going to look at them to see if we have a more uh, efficient way of running payroll. Uh, we do have issues relating to the age of our computer equipment, and particularly our server and the uh, reliability um, disaster recovery is something that we'd also be looking at. And um, from a, a, a reporting perspective, the statutory accounting compliance and audit readiness are things that are in the immediate horizon because we're coming to uh, a year end, a fiscal year end, so we have to concentrate on that. I have a personal objective to provide to the board meaningful information for decision making and that means looking at operations so as opposed to the statutory stuff which is audited and filed and all the rest of it uh, we also have the discrete information relating to particular operations classes of activity that the board really if they have more um, enhanced information they can make better decisions and that starts with uh, you know, budgets and goes on to budgetary control. So that's something I like, I'd, I'd like to do very much for the benefit of, um, of the association. Um, backing all of this stuff up is policies and procedures. Uh, procedures and processes, it's really important to have a consistency uh, and quality control in the work that's done. One of the things that happens when you have changes in people or who are doing things, they take a different view from the previous person of how it should be accounted for, what line item it should go into, whatever, and that all needs to be tightened up, I think. Um, overall, I think uh, I've been given some good people who are smart and willing, and I hope that you know I can help them to do a better job and with uh, to enjoy their work. So I'm encouraged that the board supports this effort and is taking steps to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. We appreciate that. We look forward to uh, improvement continuing on with your tenure there. Thank you. Uh, I would like for a motion to approve the consent agenda at this time. I make a, I make a motion that we approve the Second. Okay, so we have the motion twice and a second once, so is there any discussion? All in favor? The consent agenda passes. Was that unanimous or just four? It was unanimous. Why? I voted. Well, I couldn't see your... I don't want to assume anybody's vote. All right, thank you. Uh, we now move to the committee reports, and we can begin with the airport committee. Um, I've got the airport information. Um, this past month, the airport has recruited two new pilots. Well, one is a pilot with fixed wing, and the other one is a para or power glider pilot. Uh, and one of the two uh, plans to build soon, which is exciting. And this week, uh, the pilots have been mowing. Thank you. Uh, architectural committee report. 
Anyone here from the architectural committee? Hmm. Is there a reason why we're not getting anything from them for months? Excuse me? I'm asking, is there a reason why they're not reporting at all anymore? No, I don't know of any except none of them showed up and so maybe we have to uh, uh, send a message to them through the uh, board liaison or the uh, uh, staff person that we really need to have a report from them uh, once a month. Right, I agree with that. Yeah, this is the second month, I'm sure. It's actually the fourth? Fourth month? Equine Committee. Also, I think this is at least the second month. Golf Committee. I'd appreciate that, yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Cash Litzinger, and uh, thank you guys for inviting me here today. Uh, I've just been here for a couple of weeks now, so been pretty busy trying to figure out everything that's going on. Cash? Lots of help from uh, Debbie. I'm sorry? I just want to let everyone know that you're our new golf course <laughs> superintendent. Right. Uh, so we're trying to get everything straightened up. I don't know what all you really want to hear from me today, other than you probably know most of it already. Uh, but I'll go through some of the stuff. But what we're trying to do is improve the, improve the playability of the golf course and make it more economical for having it, uh, the whole reason, and to get people to come in here. We want to make it attractive for that. That's what we're trying to do. That's where we're trying to start. Uh, one of our first priorities is getting the irrigation system fixed. We have a lot of problems with that right now. If any of you play golf, you'll know that. Uh, that's going to take some time and some effort to do that. The guys are working hard next door in the maintenance, so uh, we're just trying to get everything standardized and set up so we're not stepping on each other and doing things twice. Uh, we're working on that. We have some changes in store for the pro shop to attract people to come out there, uh, make it more like a golf pro shop atmosphere so people that come from out of town will like to come back, uh, make it very friendly. Uh, we've been checking on our carts. We got 12 carts. They're real old. Everything we have is really, really old. Uh, our greens machines, we have one out of three running. One has been scavenged just to keep the other two running. Domingo does really well at doing that. We're very lucky to have him to do that. But it's a challenge. Uh, in just two weeks, I, it's a lot just to find out. Of course, we got the rain. We got the best greenskeeper in the world. Uh, gave us the, the rain this week. It's, it saved us. We were really hurting uh, for, for water. Uh, as you know, we do get our water from the sewer plant, and when they get to a certain level, we have to find another way to put water on the course. So we're doing that. We're working with mud down here. Uh, they give us a special price to help us keep that golf course alive, and we go minimal watering. It's minimal. Only the things that we can't lose. It would cost too much to lose. So be assured that that's what we're doing. Now, the way the system's set up, it doesn't look that way to a novice, uh, unless you're an irrigator and you know what's going on. But the way that system's set up, some things have to run just to get other things to come on. And if you've ever drove, driven down number 12 fairway or seen it, it's on all the time. That's your pop-off, just so you know, because it's visible, it's your pop-off, Sprinkler, if that one's not running, and you turn the system on, you'll have leaks. You'll have blowouts everywhere. So that one has to be on. That one runs like crazy. But anyway, so you know, I won't take up too much more of your time. Uh, I want you to know that uh, we are working on all this. We have a Labor Day tournament coming up uh, that's going to be happening. And we also have one of our major, our second major tournament of the year in October. It's the Happy Cervantes Memorial Tournament. So uh, if you see anybody that's a golfer who wants to play in it, have them contact us. We have all the flyers and all that out there. Uh, I want to say a special thanks too. I've got a lot of volunteers that have been showing up to work, and we have to have a volunteer program or this it won't work at all. Uh, Mark Larson, if you got know him, he's donated a very expensive battery-operated blower that we use there to keep things looking nice at the clubhouse and on the greens. 
Uh, Art Tarasas has been out there donating his time, his equipment, his own gas to help mow the greens and mow around to help the guys because of the poor equipment we have. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Baker, Dick Baker has been out helping us with ant control. So if you see those guys, ask, you know, tell them thanks. David Mann's been out cutting trees. Uh, so if you see those guys, tell them thanks, please. I appreciate it because I need them. Anything else? I have a question. Go ahead. If that's okay. Um, so uh, all that stuff sounds great. Are you going to provide plans or work with Mr. Lawrence on a publicity marketing type initiative? That is something that I have been working on. And to make a long story short, there's a lot of people out there in the golf world that do that to make money. And I've been contacting some of those people and they provide point of sale systems, they provide marketing systems. The one that I found right now uh, that I'm considering using for the next year is uh, it costs us two and a half percent of our credit card sales for the first year. That's nothing, because we don't have a lot of credit card sales. But they do everything for you. They create a website, they keep it up for you, they add whatever you want to it, and they do all of your marketing. And it's all smartphone marketing. Uh, if you drive within 60 miles of here, you'll get an email on your phone if you've signed up or ever, ever looked at Fort Clark Springs that says, hey, we have a special for you today because you're driving through town. Things like that, they do that for you. Now, the price goes up after the second year. Right. But you know after the first year whether or not it's worth it or not. Then I would, I would actually throw that at Mr. Lawrence and say when we're looking at the website, because I think we're in the process of trying to figure that out too, aren't we? Yes. The website? Yeah. As opposed to having two separate website systems, I, I would be more comfortable with one. Well, this is just something we're talking about. Yeah, uh, we're just yeah. talking about it. We're, we're exploring all different avenues, and when we're ready to present it to the board, we will. Okay. Yeah, this... The, I don't want to lead you down the wrong road. This is a golf-centered marketing plan. Right. So it's made for golfers. When you type golf, we come up if you're in the area. We come up. And then we have our other hotel. As I said, Mr. Lessinger, we'll work it out and present it to the board at exactly. the proper time. Right. I mean, that's what I'm looking at. So, yeah. yes, there is a plan for marketing to work one way or another. Okay. Thank you, Cash. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Historical Preservation Committee. items. Uh, the first one is an uh, update on the theater painting that we conducted. Uh, we got most of it done. We're going to finish up on the 22nd of August and get the remaining uh, portions of it done, which are basically only the, the cream trim and the back steps we want to do and one brown frame. So that's where we stand right now. Uh, the only other thing is the uh, packet that I submitted uh, from Debbie through Debbie to you all for the Dickman Hall awning. So uh, we're just waiting for a yay or nay on that for the proceed on it or not. Thank you very much, Bill. Debbie? I sent that to all of y'all. I sent it in an email. Yes, I saw it. Recreation committee, they're not, oh, they are functioning. Oh, no, I'm, I'm having Oh, you're getting ready, yeah? Huh? <laughs> okay. I recreate. You got to be careful, and then you may end up in more things than you, you want. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, recycling. Okay, recycling. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, recycling committee. We, as we said, um, July, it was July 26, we sent a truck of, 30, of 32 of these huge cartons and five bales of plastic and one, one bale of wax containers, which apparently is just a euphemism because it's not wax. But um, I expect to get zero pay for that. Um, Next paper was uh, 16 of the 32 cartons. 
and mixed paper gets zero. So we're actually behind. And uh, hopefully we'll make it up when we send the cardboard, the corrugated cardboard, which should happen probably by next month. So uh, <coughs> Philip has to get involved with that uh, truck. So that's a sad story because it, ta it took us four people plus the driver three hours to get all that onto the truck and out of Fort Clark. Um, so we do owe a thanks to Bill Herman who kind of supervised, uh, Joe Alapnis who helped with the truck and our narrow streets to get into and out of here. And, uh, oh, this is great, uh, Leela Robbins, a uh, female certified forklift driver, did the forklift. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was a real production. Um, the Recycle Center will be closed September 1st, which is the first Saturday of September, uh, beginning of Labor Day holiday. So we're going to keep that closed. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's all for the recycle. Oh, yes, I'm going to meet with the school about coordinating their recyclables at the end of this month. And also, uh, Rachel Herring's going to come from CTRC, our company that um, have, we have a contract with. So it'll be the two teachers, Alma, the, or, yeah, the administrator, myself, and Rachel. And perhaps Mr. Lawrence, if you had the time to do that, August 29th at 3.30. Um, I think that's all on the recycle. Yeah. Anybody? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we park ad hoc mm -hmm. committee. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I wasn't going to say this, but um, I think there's some confusion about what our committee was doing in what Maria read. Um, our committee, and I was confused partly on it, our committee is to review and recommend RV management, management policies. Did I get it right, Dan? You got it. Okay. Um, we met twice this month, three times in total. We've spent a lot of time talking about rules, uh, pet rules rules that will clean up the park, RV conditions, RV uh, AC units hanging out of windows, uh, RVs just looking bad, junk setting around, storage of RVs in the park. Another area of major discussion was permanence. Who are the permanents? They're Border Patrol, State Police, just people living here, people who are moving here and looking to buy. And some who have just got jobs here and don't know what they're looking for yet. Um, the RV park consist basically of three types of renters, if you want to call them renters. Um, they're either storage, temporary workers, or permanents. And um, so I guess one of the questions about the RV park is, is Camper's World an RV park or is it a mobile home park? One of the things that I know has happened in the last year is that I know three people have moved from the RV park to
to have them. Myself being one of them. Now, we're not necessarily here at 365, but we're spending a lot of time here. But one of the people that bought in another unit said to me, living in the RV park is like living in a truck stop. And that's kind of because of the workers. And that's where some of these rules will come in. Hopefully we can try to uh, tone them down, the loud trucks, the excess equipment, that kind of stuff. And and I got to the end of the page here, and I wrote so small I can't read my notes now without putting glasses on, so I'll leave that out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when uh, when do you anticipate your committee will be able to wrap things up? I expect that we'll have the report to you before next board meeting. Very good. Wonderful. You'll be submitting it then in the September board meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. Good work. Thank you, Joel. Right. One point of one one point of clarification: when you make reference to the workers and the loud equipment and trucks and whatnot, you're not referring to to full clerk staff. No. Thank you. No, there's. You have, different, you have different workers there. You have uh, solar. Uh, at one point, I don't know whether there's any there now, but there was wind farm. Yeah. Uh, pipeline. pipeline. Yeah. And right now, I think we've got solar back again because they're apparently they're putting solar farm in to run that pipeline or something. Yeah. Um, but there's a state trooper that just came in in the last few months, and he's you know he's just new on the job in the area, so he's living. I just wanted to make sure that, that yeah, people thanks. really understood yeah, that our not, employees no. were not the issue. No, that's not the case. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay, the uh, renter ad hoc committee, Chuck Fields, came in earlier this morning and dropped off a report for me, basically their final report that they put together. And uh, he left a copy for everybody here. So I think that's something that we'll all have to read and digest and take a look at. I think what's going to happen here is after we get the RV park report and the renter's report, we're going to have to uh, sit down with the reports from the rules and regulations and meld them together because... Uh, much, if not all, of the RV park and renters is going to go into the general rules and regulations. So just to let you know, the uh, renters are done, and uh, we've all got a copy of their final report. The last uh, one we have here are the rules and regulations ad hoc committee, and welcome back, Helena. <laughs> yes, uh, the rules and regs are uh, officially or unofficially completed. Um, we have a little word tweaking uh, meeting for tomorrow, so um, I've been working on the format, which has been a real pain, and I'm going to ask Katie Brown again for help for tabs and page numbering and so on. But the other thing, I wanted to thank Katie uh, because we had the original document was single space, two columns, 46 pages. And we couldn't revise because we couldn't even read it. And um, Katie was able to download it, give me separated uh, lines and larger print. So um, let's see. Uh, so we're, we're, we're officially probably going to give it to the board for review at least by next week so so far it's 20 pages one and a half spaces font size is 12 so everybody's going to be able to read it easily thank you very much for all your work Colleen and thank you uh, Katie Brown for uh editing or adjusting that document so it was a workable form for him. Appreciate it. Okay, we now uh, move to the community council report. Morning. 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 Um, the July movie, Jumanji, was very well attended. We had 60 plus uh, people. Um, we couldn't have asked for better weather. Everyone was great at policing their area. I even had to stop people that were trying to pick up their popcorn. 
because the deer will eat it. Um, there were no non-members in attendance that were not members guests. So everyone that was there was either a member or a member's guest. Our next two movies are scheduled for uh, Saturday, August 25th and September 1st. Our August movie is on uh, Saturday after school starts and we are showing Wonder. Our September 1st movie is on Labor Day weekend, that Saturday, and we'll be showing Spider-Man Homecoming. We have one more movie scheduled for September and that will be on Saturday the 22nd, but we haven't, uh, we haven't determined that movie yet. Uh, we moved back into the Post Theater in October and we reserved tentatively the, the theater for the 20th of October and the 10th of November. Um, that's as far as we've scheduled. Um, all that being said, we, we always need help with the movies. A full sponsorship for an outdoor movie is $205 and an indoor movie is $110. To all. <laughs> um, we have to purchase the DVD, so if anyone would like to purchase the DVD that we of the movie we choose and loan it to us, for the showing, that would also be helpful. And of course, we always need um, help with the uh, concessions. Uh, Community Council's first meeting uh, this fall is Saturday, September 8th at 10 a.m. here in the boardroom. Among other things, we'll be discussing the upcoming ghostly tours. We hope to have all the pertinent information to make our request to the board in September, and we'd like to be added to the agenda if that's possible. I'm not sure what I need to do for that. Um, we are tentatively looking at doing two weekends like last year on October 13th and the 27th, but it's not, it's not firm. Uh, the last thing I have is that community council, we've been approached a lot about uh, contacting board members. Well, I've, we've been approached a lot about questions and concerns and we always refer them to them, contact a board member of your choice or put in the suggestion box or uh, see Mr. Lawrence, but now I've had quite a few asking about how to contact the board members. Um, so we would like to ask if maybe the board could post their emails in the dispatch to the board members. That's all I have. They can contact uh, any board member through the uh, uh, email address that's at the bottom of the HQ dispatch and has been since the beginning. All they have to do is send an email there and say I direct this to um, Bill Herman or Deborah Isaacs, Maria Perkins, John Hopes, whoever. Okay, I don't think people were aware of that. I was not aware. That's of right that. there. All they have to do is read it. Go down there. Okay. And by the way, while we mention that, that would be a real good place to get information about the Ford operation. Might even possibly be more accurate than some of the social media is floating around out there be a good spot to go for it. Thanks. Okay, uh, before we uh, take the member comments pertaining to action items, I'm sure we'll have some this month as opposed to the last few months. The first item, number A, for approval of purchase and installation of the air conditioning for the gatehouse and the pro shop, that's off the table. Uh, there's been other arrangements made and so that's not going to be necessary to do at this time. I would also ask that uh, when you come forward to be uh, try to be concise and focused on the point and uh, simply we're not going to have a wide open Wild West debate here but just put forth your position and your reasons for it and so we can all uh, be respectful of each other and hear those points and positions. And I appreciate that, I'm sure you will. So with that, I would uh, open it up for any com member comments on any of the proposed action items. Okay, someone in the back, please step forward. If we could get your name, sir, and your position and your reasons. Good morning. My name is Travis Houston. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. that's better. You can, you can get it out of there. Yeah, you have to shrink or raise the <laughs> microphone. Thank you. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Travis Houston. Uh, I teach at Bracket ISD and I live on Colony Row. And I was, I'm uh, speaking to uh, Action Item G, which is the computer server 
that may be uh, in need of replacement. I was called yesterday by Catherine Nylander in Del Rio. She's a IT consultant and a friend of mine. And she let me know that the current bid was upwards of $20,000, and that sounded utterly ridiculous to me. Um, I wanted to submit that myself and my small team of local students, community members, could do it for a fraction of the cost. Um, all we need to do is be allowed to assess it and give us an opportunity for it. Could you tell us more about the program at the school? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've had a thriving computer science program for three years now. Um, I'm in charge of that. Uh, we've won numerous competitions, state champions in 2016. We were state runner-up this last year. Uh, we've got a lot of brilliant minds at the school, hard workers, and if they don't know it, they'll either own up to it or figure it out. Um, we do uh, work for the school as well. So last summer we were responsible for all of the Chromebook deployment, so we set up 300 laptops plus and uh, distributed those. But, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else have comments on any of the action items? No? All right. <clears throat> We're going to move in then to action item B, and this is one that I put forth, and it's a uh, adoption of a policy for uh, consent by the directors to uh, take action by an email vote. The this is allowed by Texas law under Property Code 209, and it is strictly controlled. Uh, there's certain criteria that has to be met and there are a number of issues that cannot be handled that way. But it's also allowed by our Declaration of Protective Restrictions, which has the same restrictions as the state law, plus one additional one. Our declaration requires that all the directors unanimously have to agree to take the vote. They don't have to vote one way or the other unanimously, but they have to agree to do the vote by that method unanimously. The purpose of that is there comes up more often than we would like, but there comes up matters that may have some urgency or that are emergency that need to be dealt with by the board and it's not uh, timely to wait for a bo regular board meeting. And they may need action uh, very quick and uh, to call a special board meeting, which would be the alternative, we need to give a 72 hour notice. So if we need to respond to something, I, I can give you, a, you know, various examples, but let's say that server that we, the gentleman was just talking about crashes. Once that goes down, we have no telephone service, we have no internet, we have no accounting records, membership records available. It's something that would need to be dealt with urgently. Now, to get consent from five board members may not be a problem if they're all available if one isn't having problems receiving their email, or if there isn't one hospitalized in the hospital unable to respond. If that should happen, we would not be able to take a vote to approve expenditure of funds to correct the problem we're dealing with. That's just one example. So by the board giving written consent uh, now, we would have that consent to take that email vote. And you, again, you'd have to have at least a quorum of member of directors voting. It wouldn't be just one or two directors could vote. You'd have to still have the three vote for whatever the issue was. So with that, I'll open it up for discussion. So I, I need a point of clarification. So you are saying that by us signing this document, we're agreeing to be able to vote on anything that somebody might attach as urgent via email, whether all five of us are available to answer that email or not. 
It would have to be in compliance with the Texas Property Code 209 and our declarations, I believe part six, number nine, which also includes the uh, same restrictions as the Property Code 209. You can't, there's many things you cannot hold on. You can't raise assessments. You can't change a budget substantially. And it goes on, there's like 15 different items that you cannot hold on that in that manner. Well, I, I don't agree with this. I'm not going to give blanket approval to just do email votes as required. Um, and to address the, the emails not being received, which I, actually, Debbie, I didn't even get that email that you sent this morning. It might be in my junk. I have no control over it goes into my junk mail. However, that's not my only method of communication. Everybody on this table has my phone number and can call me or text me if there's something urgent. And something actually did happen where I had to get called and asked if I didn't get an email. So I, I personally do not agree with giving my consent in advance for email votes. So you, what you're saying, you do not consent to an email vote. It's not consenting into any one particular issue, just consenting to take a vote by email. But we already had that in place, that we could communicate and vote via email, but all of us had to agree to vote. It's been done for years, you guys said. It is, but it requires the consent of all five. If one person doesn't consent to it or doesn't respond, there is no vote. Right, so per topic, which I think that's fine. I think, I, I don't think that we should be saying, hey, I, we need to vote on this right now. Um, if you don't read your email, then that's too bad. You've already signed this form that says that it's okay to vote on these items. I mean, it will I, be just, a, I just don't agree with that. The alternative will be every time one of these issues come up is we'll call a special board meeting. And um, it's not going to be done by going down the line and saying, well, when can you make it, when do you can make it. It will be called as quickly as possible, uh, giving out the 72-hour notice, because it will be necessary. Well, this goes back to how is that different from what we've already been doing, where an email is sent saying we have this topic, do you agree to vote on this via email? It's urgent, and everybody consent to it that way per topic. I am in favor of that. That's fine, except we just had an issue where there was some real urgency, not for me, not for the board, but for one of our members. And we were unable to take care of it to address it because we did not reach you by email. And you and didn't try yeah, via phone. I right? heard all your arguments about the other ways we can contact you. On the other hand, how were we to know that you, your email was going into trash? You evidently knew it, so why didn't you notify us? Again, if it's something urgent, I can use the front office as an example. They sent me emails and I apparently didn't receive those, but they had no problem picking up a phone to call to find out what the reason was for not being able to answer that email. So I don't think relying on email as a single point of communication is very successful for this group. There needs to be a backup system or there needs to be something that says, hey, did you receive this and why haven't you voted? At which point that triggers a, okay, let me go to my computer, check my junk mail and see if it's there. And if it's not, well then you request the information again. But I don't think that there's any reason to say that we need to provide our consent for all electronic votes. I think it's fine to say it by topic. So you don't want to allow a majority of the board to uh, uh, address an issue and make a decision. As one of the five people who's allowed to vote on that? No, I want to know what we have to vote on. I think I've earned that. All right, right. fine, we know your position. Anyone else have a comment? Well, I, like I, I thought we had to consent and also all five had to agree to look at the issues at hand. All, all five have to agree to take the vote okay. by email. And this is not required by state law. This is required by our declaration. The state law does not require that unanimous consent, but our declaration does. And so you have to all agree. So in other words, one person connects an issue. And it's been done. Well, right, it's been so. done on several occasions, but again, what are the issues? I, if, if a machine is down and you got to have it immediately, that's one thing. But if somebody just needs a, a variance or something, that's a different thing. The amount of a pressing issue would be the 
would be another concern that only two or three people could vote or three people could vote whether it's an emergency or not emergency. So how many things are going to become an emergency without having everybody's consent? That would be my biggest problem. Well, we've had uh, five or six since I've been on the board. But I, I think that I have a question. Who is going to be in charge of sending out this email and if he does not him or her get a response then following up with the telephone call or following up with the other media who who is in charge of putting that out it should be the person that requested it to begin with I mean, i'm just asking that would probably be correct okay so if I call for the poll and yeah. send out an email, uh, we have for years handled this situation this way without any problem That's until true. all of a sudden now we've got a problem. But up till then there's been no problem sending out an email request for the vote and everybody responds. And what we're really concerned here with mostly is if someone were to be incapacitated or uh, in the hospital Sure. And we would, our hands would be tied for 72 hours or longer. By the time you get the notice out and get it posted on the marquee and posted on the doors, uh, it's going to be even a little bit longer than 72 hours. But if that's the way that we want to do it, uh, and in this case, because of the way it's written in the declaration, one person can dictate it, so that's the way we'll do it. I don't have an issue with email votes as long as we are all given at per topic the opportunity to say yes I want to vote on this via email or no I don't because you know honestly not everything is emergent and what seems to be convenient is doing an email vote and just because it's convenient doesn't mean it should be done for every single thing okay I would like to call for a vote um, with the understanding that whoever calls for this urgent vote, follow up with the electronic, and if you didn't get a, if they do not get a response, then follow up with a telephone call or other media to be sure that every, all of five of us get contacted. And under that circumstances, I would call for a vote, uh, yay or nay, to pass this. Really, we shouldn't even be discussing it. We never made a motion to discuss this item anyhow. What is your motion? We never made a motion to discuss the item to start with. No, we don't have to. We can discuss it before the motion is made. But I'm making a motion to, under them conditions, that whoever, if it's Bill or if it's me or if it's Miss Perkins or, or Ms. Isaac or our president, anybody that has an issue that needs to be voted on, that they would take the responsibility to be sure that everybody's contacted, either by email, telephone, telegraph, or whatever. That's a very good and sensible approach and alternative uh, offering, John. <laughs> However, the consent has to be in writing. And so if I call somebody, that's not going to do it. An email response isn't considered in writing. That's one of the reasons it's done by writing. But Okay, but if you follow up with a telephone call and then say, okay, I'm going to send you an email. Be sure and look for this. Uh, I still have to get an email response. You still have to get an email. You still have to get it in writing. I agree on yeah. that. Well, that's the way the, the, but that way you know the law that is written. It. So if I were to call up Maria, not to pick her Maria, oh, pick but if I were to call up Maria and she doesn't, she says no, then this form we're talking about signing well, it, is we can just say as a policy in the future, We'll send out an email request. If we don't hear something, I'll call that director. But that has not been a policy or an understanding to do it that way. But if we want to set that today, that's fine. 
Well, I think that we need to be sure that we, I did not get the email immediately because I was out in the middle of the boondocks and then I finally got it late that night Ben and I responded to it but uh, and I voted yes for it but I, I'm just trying to uh, uh, get this thing passed I mean I think that it is the way to handle emergency situations But given the courtesy to me or whoever may be off somewhere where they don't have cell phone for service at the time to get the email, that uh, it, I know for sure my phone, even if it doesn't have service, if you leave a message on my phone, as soon as I get service, it pops right up, bam. You got a call, you got you I got a voicemail message, bam, it says hey, wake up, look at your email, <laughs> we want a boat. All right, thank you, John. Right. No, that's exactly right because I don't when I'm with customers, I don't check email at all. But I do oh. see my messages and my voice messages, so that is the best way to get a hold to me, especially if I've got customers, because I will not look at my emails. When well, we I'm look for customers. these, call for these uh, bolts, we're generally looking for some kind of response within 24 hours or so. We're not expecting a response in 10 minutes. Right. So, well, then uh, then as a future pol policy, I'm just going to withdraw it. Uh, based on Maria's uh, not going to go for this and in the future I will call I will send out an email if I don't receive a response in 24 hours or whatever happens to be convenient for me I'll call so we need to vote on this no okay no vote. Right. thank you The uh, item number C is considered adoption of policy for use and rental of common properties. And what you have is a new version of what came out of our last workshop. And it's put out there wide open for any suggested changes, additions, subtractions, whatever you'd like to do. And uh, if it gets too involved, we'll have to move it to another workshop, but maybe we've, uh, we'll be able to uh, handle it here today. I make a motion to consider adoption of the policy of use and rental of common properties. Is second. there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Um, I, I did look at these rates, and I'm glad that some of the suggested items that we're not going to be costing are back on the table with that but my one question is why are nonprofits going to be paying less to rent a facility than a member a member should be paying less than anybody else to, to rent a facility from us in well, my opinion I guess uh, based on past practice and what came out of the workshop we felt that nonprofits are uh, working for the benefit of the entire community and so we'd like to give them a little better break. It's not a whole lot different, but uh, uh, a member is obviously going to get a break and be low, but the member, when they're renting a facility, it's for their personal use and their personal group or family or whatever. The nonprofit is operating to benefit the entire community, and that's, that's the reasoning behind it. So you can accept it or reject it, but that's it. Well, I thought when I asked in the workshop about what the nonprofit was, I was told it was not clubs here. It was anybody who wanted to rent that was a nonprofit that was not on the fort. So under under what you just said, then that means nonprofits like community council will then have to start renting our facilities based on this, this here. Uh, the community council is an extension somewhat, although not officially, of the association. And so we can arrange it. The board, board can always make special arrangements where special circumstances and cases 
as we have done with them for their movie night at the Pulse Theater. Uh, I don't think we could expect them to pay $275 rent to put on their movie night. So we can deal with that. The board can, can arrange, as it has arranged with them, uh, something more favorable. So then this, this nonprofit really is nonprofit everywhere, not just our nonprofits here. That's a, a nonprofit that wants to come in and rent one of our facilities on a space available would be able to rent it on these prices, this, these terms. Most of the time that would be churches, uh, it could be the Chamber of Commerce, it could be any nonprofit organization. Correct. Okay, so then my only comment is that members should be paying less than nonprofits. No. That, that's just my comment. Okay. Hi, I've got a question on these facilities that have the stars on them. If not rented, shall be available at no charge. How long are you going to be able to leave those open for somebody to rent rather than give it away? Is there going to be a set like a, around a holiday or something? Will those be up to a certain point? We're going to leave them open to rent them? Or anybody can come in and rent them and just do away with the rental of them that might come in later? I think if someone comes in to rent it, they get priority. And uh, there's going to be specific uh, procedures and policies that will be put forth by the staff to uh, be a, a addition to this too. Well, that's kind of where I, if, how long are we going to leave them open, say, for the 4th of July, and then they don't rent? Uh, do we start a list and then at that point whoever's first on the list gets it free? I guess is what I'm asking. Are you going to put a time limit to how long you're going to leave them open to rent them? Well, oh, before I think uh, members will have to understand that if they reserve the facility well in advance and someone comes to rent it, they're going to be knocked out. That's what I want to do. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? So just to clarify, if I'm going to use myself as an example so that I pick on me. So if I reserve Redbridge for my family to come visit me for Christmas, and I reserved it in January for December of, so January 2019, and I reserved it for December 2019, any time in between there, if somebody comes in wanting to pay for Redbridge, my priority gets kicked out. Is that what I understand? That's correct. Well, I don't think that's very fair to anybody. An option might be that the member would pay the rent, give the option to pay the rent. So if we have someone who that would be pay, a good sure. match the pay, match the rent. Right. So I think I'd like to see what the front office staff is going to add to this before I'm comfortable voting on it completely. Okay. Is there any further discussion? No. We do have a motion and a second to adopt it. So. We're going to call the vote. All those in favor of adopting the policy? All those opposed? Okay, three to two, three votes for, two against, with an understanding that there's going to be procedural additions to it by the staff, which will be approved by the board of directors. Passes. Mr. President, if, if members would have, directors would have questions, concerns about these policies, that would be useful to us when trying to work it out. Sure. Well, I do have some more questions. Uh, what about, what if, what if, if so many free things start going on and the electric costs start going up s uh, substantially? That's the kind how of question we, I'd like you to send to us. How do we address that? That's the kind of question I'd like you to send to us so that we can discuss it, deliberate, talk about it, then propose something to you. Okay. Well, many of these facilities don't have any electricity involved to start with, and uh, I don't suspect that the usage by members is going to change that much from what it is now and has been all of a sudden because we're just clarifying it. I think members have been using the Red Bridge area for years at no cost. Uh, so, you know, what's from a practical standpoint, we can't live in a world of what if, I don't think. But uh, 
anyway, they'll work that out with you, Debbie. Well, that would be my only concern. Was okay. going to be the electric on the adult center and stuff like that. Well, in the adult center, we're talking about rooms, and during the time that it's open is when it would be available for the members to use, of course. And electricity is going, air conditioning is going over there. From what I understand, even after they've taped up the thermostat, it's like a meat locker in there half the time. So uh, that electricity, whether there's a member using it or not, isn't going to be affected. But we do have to keep an eye on it, so we appreciate that. Okay, the next uh, item D, we have a approval of a variance for a building permit. That variance has been recommended by the architectural committee, and they have approved a building permit for it. And what the variance is to make it understandable and as simple as possible, for some reason or another, I understand that the setback from the rear lot line in Unit 27 is 10 feet. I don't know if that would even stand up in court if it was challenged. I think it starts to be an invasion of property, personal property, real property rights. The property backs up to the golf course. It's fenced in along the lot line, which is allowable, and a 10-foot setback would interfere by six feet with this gentleman who wants to replace an existing shed with a much larger shed, but it would be situated in a manner that it would not become any closer to the back lot line than the existing shed, which is four feet. So he still would be maintaining a four foot setback. Uh, more common setback requirement on rear lot lines is uh, three feet, and in some cases zero. So to try to hold him to 10 feet just seems unreasonable. So we have a request for a variance to allow him to have that shed placed within four feet of the back property line, maintaining that as a setback, which would require a six foot variance onto the required setback. I make a motion that we accept this variance, this building permit. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, questions? I have a question. Um, so why do we have CCNRs if that dictate those setbacks if we're allowing people to build their fence up to the property line? It's just a, I just don't understand why. I guess so. Uh, to start with, many of these CCNRs are 30 years old and they were uh, put in place oftentimes by the developer of this community, and he may have had reasons other than the current reasons would require. Variances are not something unusual. They have been issued here all the time. Most cities that have building codes have uh, opportunity for variances made when it uh, does not infringe or hurt or bother anybody and uh, is necessary for to allow a home an owner to enjoy the use of his property. It's, it's a lot of cases these things say that um, you can put a fence on your property line. That's nothing to do with the setback. It's just, that's, it's written. Fence line, fences can be built on the property line. No, I, I know what a variance is and why we do that, but I wanted to know about CCNRs. And, and like, like uh, Dan says, these CCNRs, some, you know, you take unit one, three, 14, 15, these things were written like in 1972. Times have changed. And we've got to get within reasonable changes on these CCNRs so that they make sense. And in this case, also, if you want further uh, uh, information on it, this member uh, has accounted, uh, has had a discussion with his legal counsel regarding this. Because first of all, the shed is movable. It seems amazing as large as it is, but they moved it in and placed it there. 
And uh, so it is a movable shed. The CCNRs require the 10 foot setback for any building that is being constructed or erected. And his legal counsel advises him that he doesn't need a setback. But to avoid any future silly litigation and ending up in court over something, a setback that's recommended by the architectural committee and only seems to make sense and be reasonable can avoid all that by just simply granting the variance. So my question with the CCNRs, is there going to be some sort of initiative to try to bring those up to a more reasonable um, date, I guess? or There already has been a request put out in the beginning of this board's uh, uh, inauguration, you might say, asking for the various units to come forth with recommendations to change their CCNRs. We haven't received any yet, but we've been pretty busy, so maybe we need to go after them again. That might be something you could contact each unit, somebody in each unit, and ask them to... Yeah, I can take that on. Yeah, that would um, be great. Because, I mean, I... I, granted, when someone tells me they've talked to a lawyer, okay, copy. A lawyer can get around anything if they're good. But what I care more about is if somebody is able to build a fence on their property, on their property line, why do we have to give them a variance to how close they can put their, their stuff to a fence when I could care less what someone does inside their own fence? It's when they're encroaching onto fort property that I have a problem. They so, need a variance because a fence and a building, as you know, are two different things. I understand and that, but I'm saying if we the fence is allowed the CCNRs, specifically, we won't have to do these exactly. as often, right? But that's okay. the point. Yeah. They have to be All right, can we take a vote now? Do we need any further detailed discussion? All those in favor of granting the variance passes unanimously. All right, we have item number E, consider approval of the direct TV contract for motel and common area TV services. We previously approved their proposal, but now there's a contract which you were provided at our last workshop meeting to for your uh, review. And uh, that contract needs to be signed and before it's signed, we need an official approval by the board of directors uh, allowing that contract to be signed. So any comments or questions? We could start with you, Maria. Oh, I thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of direct TV contract for motel and common area TV services. And I have no questions. Second. Second. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract. Comments or questions? And again, you made the motion, you have the privilege. I, I said I have no comments. No comments? Anyone have any comments or questions? Well, the 42 outlets, and then we've got a total of 38 rooms. Where are the extra outlets going to be? Actually, it's 39 units. Okay. The 39th unit actually is involves four different common areas. Areas. Okay. Those were in my notes. And then the uh, the monthly after everything is done and in is that the 323 once, or is the 169? Uh, it's 323, and that's uh, if we pay the upfront cost for okay. the installation equipment. If we don't, I think total it was around $700 a month, where we had been paying over 800, 8 or 900 for big country to get eight channels. This would be uh, with no money up front, about $100 a so a month less and provide us like 160 channels as opposed to eight. Okay, thank you. All right, any other comments, discussions? All those in favor of signing the contract? Okay, we have a unanimous. Christy, make sure that gets in the minutes, please. Okay, we have the consider approval of contract for landscaping and uh, Richard you want to 
make a motion to consider. I second. <laughs> we have a second. Yes, I do. I second it. Oh, okay. Well, I see it. Marie, I can't see you through Bill. Well, you can Bill. Sorry. Can I get a slower chair? <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to consider the uh, contract for landscaping. Can you uh, give us... Uh, uh, very briefly, Mr. President, I have given you some notes, rather detailed, I think, on the, on the proposed contract, and that that contract being uh, offered by N and N Landscaping of, of Del Rio, I believe my notes are rather detailed. Um, they were excellent. Okay. So, without at, at this moment, without disclosing the the uh, details of the contract, because it may be that we have to go out again. I don't know, but. Um, that's the point. You, yes, you, we, see, you see, you see there in front of you the, the details of the contract. The dollar value we do not want to disclose at this time, uh, unless we end up approving the contract because it could hurt uh, the negotiating position. What I did not see in here was what common areas are going to be mowed. I mean, there's no nothing showing exactly what and where was going to be mowed. If we've mowed it before, it'll be mowed again. That's the best way I know to answer that because it, it covers vast territory okay. and, and uh, um, with the exception of a few areas that uh, are typically handled by um, uh, uh, um, staff, Mr. Avila, mm -hmm. uh, the front lawns of the administration building, Dickman Hall, things of that sort, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, historical district primarily. Beyond that, it also does not include the um, airstrip that the pilots take care of themselves. They're very particular and they don't want mesquite thorns and whatnot on that runway. Aside from that, everything else will be mowed and be mowed on at least a monthly basis. So like Red Bridge, all that, all that area? All, that, everything that's ever been mowed will be mowed okay. in this contract. That's the best way I know to describe it because it, it, it's just, Everywhere. Like in the units, what's always been common area, that will be done. In going well. into like 38, that, that road going down through there, all that will be mowed and stuff? Yeah. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. If it's been mowed before, it continue to be mowed by, okay. by these people. All right. That's, that was my question. I think I would feel more comfortable if there was a map or something that included, this is what you guys are going to be mowing, and or coupled with a list of this is where the common areas are or whatever because that was one of my questions too it just says that we're going to mow all this turf area but we clearly have a lot of turf so um, I think a, a map would suffice as easily I don't want you to show me a map here but I mean <laughs> <laughs> well this is very vague so anybody could decide oh well we didn't think that was common property Maybe. today well, so you can be assured we did detail uh, those maps for the um, for all of the contractors to take a look see you know, they all all of the contractors looked at the same map mm -hmm. and and I could provide that to you well I just think it'd be a nice inclusion but it was and I that, apologize yeah. for that um, I did have a question about the turf fertilization line um, are there areas that are going to be getting fertilized we included at some that point? but that's not that that's not something we're particularly interested in. Okay, and then are they going to be doing anything on the golf course? No. Okay. And my last question is, if this is approved, when would this particular company be starting? Pretty quick. Right away. Okay. It's growing fast. With these rains. Thank you. Are there any further... Uh, did the, they, I'm reading here also that they will tri, uh, trim trees and stuff at additional cost. Yeah, that's an additional cost. Okay. And, and really, um, what we're mostly interested in is being able to trim them so that tractors or what have you can get under them. Okay. All right. Not much beyond that. Oh, I did it with the tree trimming. Sorry. So with the tree trimming, if there are branches that overlap the streets, like the the main roads that we drive on, like I'll use Airport Road for example, because there's lots of branches that are um, hitting vehicles as you drive, are they going to be cutting those or who's going to be cutting those? Maintenance? 
either. We, we could pay them to do it if we can't do it ourselves. Okay, so what's going to be the priority? For us to put a work order in and ask for maintenance to do it, or? That's the best way. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, all those in favor of accepting this contract? This passes unanimously. Right this minute, we can't disclose that cost because we may be negotiating with another company. We haven't signed this contract yet. And we haven't let anybody know who's received the contract, so until that's done, we should be. <coughs> well, we, don't, we might be in negotiating with it. We might get a cheaper price somewhere down the line. But we did save money. Okay, but that information will be available to you once everything is finalized on it. The uh, next item we have is a consideration and approval of a contract for a new uh, computer server. And I make a motion to consider approval of contract for new computer server. Is there a second? Second. Okay. The uh, situation has been talked about or discussed to, s to some extent. The, uh, I'll try to do a brief update. We have a uh, server that the IT person that we use on a uh, as-needed basis, I guess you would say, as uh, an additional job for him. He holds a uh, very responsible job at, in that same field at Rio Grande Electric. So it offers some uh, credentials for his uh, knowledge. Had refused to work on our system anymore because he felt it was uh, possible that it could crash. And if it did, there was no adequate backup being done. The backup was actually being stored in the same server that we're talking about. So if the server went down, the backup would go down with it and leaving us with nothing, which would be, uh, I think the best word to describe it would be a disaster. We would lose all of our records and files and information. That vulnerable situation has been corrected for the time being. It has been changed and the system is being backed up uh, with off-site storage so that if the server goes down or if the building burns down, we'll still have, and it's done daily, I understand, so that we would have our information up until the previous evening. If it went down right now, we'd have our information up through last night. So that immediate, uh, terrible scenario has been covered. We reached out to, I shouldn't say we pretty much, for the most part, Richard reached out to a company, CSI, and they are uh, familiar with our system, what we have, and what we use it for. Keep in mind our telephone service, internet, everything goes through that. They put forth a proposal to uh, replace it. And uh, that proposal, I, we're again not going to disclose the dollar amount, but it was a substantial cost. We reached out to IBM. IBM uh, declined to become involved because they no longer work with a win Windows-based system, which we have, so they wouldn't, wouldn't do it. We reached out to, is it CDW? And uh, that gentleman uh, was sent all the information that we had here. He said he would be back to us within the day with a price, a quote. We never heard from him again. He won't, doesn't answer email or telephone requests. So there's nothing coming from him. The uh, IT person that we use, the Rio Grande Electric fellow, uh, contacted the computer doctor 
in Del Rio and they won't work on this kind of a system or do that. So that left us with after four different inquiries, one bid. We then had uh, Maria recommended a friend of hers, the same lady that this gentleman from the school uh, mentioned, who I guess she's a civilian worker for the Air Force at Laughlin. Uh, and she came out and looked at it. And she had a different opinion. Uh, basically what she said was you don't need to replace that server right now, but you should put a plan in place to be able to replace it within three years or so. And uh, we could do a fix on it for now that would take care of it, hopefully for that length of time, which would be much, much less expensive. Richard sent her back an email and asked her for some dollar figures on both options, completing, replacing the server as CSI had proposed and costs for uh, doing the temporary uh, fix on it for right now. And he never heard back from her. He, uh, after, I don't know, a week, a week and a half or so, uh, Maria said she ran into her at the uh, base, I guess, or somewhere, and she uh, indicated that her, her position, her job with Ed Laughlin was now uh, changed to she was in, going to be uh, uh, burdened with so much responsibility that she wouldn't be able to work with us on it, but she recommended two other things. One, the computer doctor, which we'd already talked to, and one was somewhere else. I'm getting close to the end. The, uh, <clears throat> I also contacted uh, someone in the Houston area that has very, very high credentials, I can say, and a proven track record, extremely high. And he, uh, I sent, emailed him the specs from CSI and didn't even really, I just asked him this, for a comment what he thought, within two hours I had an answer back from him what it would cost to replace it, which was slightly higher than CSI, but a couple of the units were a little bit faster, had a little bit more storage, a little better processor, but what was being proposed was very adequate according to him. As far as whether we needed it or not, of course, he uh, could not uh, comment on that and refused to comment on it because he isn't here to examine exactly what we have. So as he pointed out, he won't know. He, uh, the bottom line was after some discussion, he said you have to go with who you trust the most. The IT fellow from RGE also commented that the uh, proposal from CSI was for ex equipment that was exactly what he thought we should have and what he had wanted us to have. And so that's where we're at. We got CSI saying this is what you need, this is what it will cost. We got the IT guy from Real Ground Electric saying that's what you need, this is what it will cost. And we have the uh, lady from uh, Laughlin saying you don't necessarily need that now. With that, I'm done. <laughs> well, um, the lady at Laughlin, Ms. Nylander, uh, she actually reached out to Mr. Houston back there. And a few, gosh, maybe like six, seven months ago, at a board meeting when I was on the other side of the audience, I recommended that we reach out to the high school and see what they can do for our computer services um, as it presents a twofold opportunity. One, that we get a better deal on the equipment that we need, and two, it's an educational experience for the kids to work on a big project. And, um, and then now Mr. Houston has, has come here, which I did invite him to today's meeting, and he's offering us just that, the opportunity to assess the actual server the way Ms. Nylander did, and I will also note that's the big difference between all of these uh, bids that people have been on site to look into the server at all of these technolog technological pieces and assess based on what they see, which I believe is a very important factor when we are looking at replacing or 
repairing or whatever it is that we're going to have to do to this server, we need eyes on the ground or boots on the ground looking at these systems and not using a a guess, if you will, of, yeah, this looks good and here's your big cost. So given the new information that we have an additional asset who lives here on the fort, has a vested interest in cost savings and has a vested interest in making sure that he has an ability to teach the next generation of technological experts, uh, we, I say we give this guy a shot. Okay, do we have any input from Andrew or Richard? Uh, again, I have uh, provided you with, with what I think are some very detailed notes. I don't think I have anything to add to that. Uh, okay. I have a question yes, sir. for you, for y'all. Is this what y'all want to do? Yes, sir. We need to move ahead. And I disagree. I think that if six people in the technology community have said that this is overkill, and the one person that came and looked at the stuff says it is overkill, you need something different, well, we <clears throat> deserve to give him an opportunity to try. The one person who said that it was overkill also said that we did not have a, back, a backup or that we did not have a safety net, when in fact I did put one in place before she came and took a look at it. When she did look at it, uh, she recommended that we do a bare metal copy, a bare metal uh, uh, backup. We had already installed the bare metal and had already done the backup, but she didn't detect that. So I'm not confident uh, that uh, uh, her recommendations or I'm yes, not confident in her recommendations. Uh, just to clarify the issue with Ms. Nylander, the first question basically we asked her is how long this machine is going to last. So it's not really a question, it's really a question of whether we replace it now before it breaks or we continue to run the risk that it will break before we have to fix it, but we're going to have to replace this at some point. This is a hardware issue, by the way. The, uh, the problem that we have with uh, our, our consultant, our IT consultant, is he's, he's pretty comfortable with the software and the network um, connections, but the hardware itself is what makes him nervous. And I'm not contesting whether or not we replace or repair. What I'm saying is that we have a local person who lives right here on the fort who teaches the high school technology area, and I'm sorry, Mr. Houston, if I'm botching that up, but they're award-winning. They just got a technology grant at the school, and I think that before we go spend as much money as projected here on this uh, proposal, we give our local uh, uh, experts the opportunity to assess it and to put in a bid. I'm not saying yes or no, Ms. Nylander is amazing or not. She has many credentials, and I trust what someone who says they are an expert and provides the expert backup documents that I trust that they're knowing what they're talking about, just like I trust that that gentleman back there knows what he's talking about. And if we're not even willing to give him a chance to assess it and see what they can do, then I think that's a disservice to our membership and a disservice to our budget. I'm assuming we're talking about this one out of Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota. Is that the one we're looking at? Yes, CSI. Accepting? CSI. Are they coming down here to install this, or are they going to expect our IT guy to install what they send us? It, they will be involved in the installation process, and we also have a commitment from um, the uh, Texanet uh, uh, tech as well uh, to be involved in on-site to accomplish this. Now, I want to add an, another comment, too. Um, well, no, I'll, I'll reserve that for later. I'm sorry. My only question is, and I'm not picking on him, but why hasn't Mr. Houston been in contact with us before today? Well, you know what was going on. I didn't know him. Ms. Nylander knew him. 
Well, well, what, well, what, I have a problem. I'll go ahead and speak now because I have a problem when a, when a contractor or a bidder already knows the competitor's bid. I bet you that's you can come under it. Uh, I don't know how that happened, how it was disclosed, but that's why you don't disclose bids. In the July meeting that I missed on the video, you very clearly stated we're looking at twenty thousand dollars or more. He that is in the video. Said but you said a number, so that number is public. That, okay. That's what you okay. reported. I wasn't okay. even here for it. I watched it on the video. But, I mean, the number isn't the what's bid, the problem. Yes, it is. The bid was dismissed. It was disclosed, and it should not have been. I have a problem with that. I reserve any further comment. <clears throat> the question here is, it seems to me, do we want to take the word of two... Um, expert professionals working in the field or and plus one that uh, looking at all the specs never mentioned anything about it being overkill that's one from Houston but of course he did qualify the fact that he was not here to inspect our system so to make it clear uh, that information was not available to him but we have these people saying this is what you need and then we have someone that couldn't even get back to us with a quick email saying I'm uh, overloaded with my regular job now I can't work with you anymore and until you ran into her then we got word back what why we hadn't heard from her we go with what her opinion is which is also in conflict not only on that but on other proven uh, information about our existing system and also with a uh, high school class or teacher who I'm sure is, is a well-qualified expert, but has he inspected our system? Has he been involved? And if not, why hasn't he been involved earlier? This has been going on now for, what, about three weeks? Ms. Nylander reached out to him yesterday. So, I mean, as far as the timeline's concerned, I... I can't answer to a timeline. What I'm telling you is we now have another opportunity, and I think it's the fair thing to do to allow that opportunity to play out, especially if they are here on the fort and can provide eyes on and physical support. I'm not saying we just tell him he's got a contract. I'm saying give them an opportunity to assess it and see if they can meet the needs. And if they can't, then we come back and say, well, they couldn't do it. Let's look at these contracts. But we're, we're at a point where, you know, it, we have membership who doesn't trust the decisions we're making. And a lot of it, when we have members who are coming up to say, hey, I volunteered it to help you figure this out, instead of encouraging that, we're now slamming a door in their face before we're even giving them an opportunity to do something. And okay. this is a very prime example of that. At, at one time, we had a gentleman that was working with the old DOS system and helping us do reports and stuff. I think his name was David Gabler. Is he still associated with us in any way? He worked with us on our on our computer programming. It was Mr. David Barfoot and no man. No, there was a David David Gabler back. David Gabler is a consultant with respect to the Sun Belt system. Okay. Well, isn't the, the thing we're worried about is not our Sun Belt system? We're not talking about software. We're talking about okay hardware. 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 Okay. Okay, I have something if I can please speak. I, I am a huge supporter of school and school projects. Uh, I have I am working with nine schools as we sit here and speak. The but I don't think that that's our question right this minute. The question is that one person seems to think it could last three years and that is a opinion and I think that we all have opinions. Um, as a business owner and 
if I even ex somebody hints to me that that piece of equipment is fixing to go out, I'm fixing to replace it. And that's the bottom line. You can't wait until it goes out. Thank you, John. And uh, the lady that also was proposing uh, three years or so uh, had some work. I think she was some idea of something we had to do now, too. We wanted to know well, how much are we going to spend now on a temporary fix as opposed to how much we can spend for a permanent fix. Yeah. And it, it comes down to pay me now or pay me later, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be replaced. Is it going to be replaced now? Or is it going to be replaced three to five years from now when uh, cost may be more or less? Who knows? Business uh, situation, you spend the money now. Right. You don't put a band aid on the, it. Uh, the actual hard way where the uh, CSI gets a huge discount from uh, Dell, if you priced it out on the Dell website, it prices out at about 18000 This is just for some of the hardware involved. And with their discount, it's around ten thousand or something. They're passing on, and you can search and find all kinds of discounts. The party I had in Houston, uh, I forget, but they they were getting a large discount also that they were passing on. That discount may not be there three years from now. I still think we need to give Mr. Houston an opportunity to assess it and see if he's even willing to proceed with providing a bid. I understand, and we all understand that you're, that's your position. So, but I'm saying, like, there's no reason to have to vote for this if we are going to give this gentleman an that opportunity. I understand that that's your position. Yes. Uh, and there's no reason to keep on going over that position. We, already, we, we understand your position. We got it. The... Uh, the question then further goes to your position, Maria. Do we want to take the risk and continue on and uh, take a chance on maybe something uh, unfortunate happens? Uh, because even if it goes down with our backup, we're going to be out of business until it gets replaced. So. I can't speak for Mr. Houston, but he is back there. So, I mean, we could ask him the question, how soon can you come assess this problem and how soon can you figure out a solution? I think that we've already covered this. No, but, well, Dan's asking me, do we want to take a risk? And I, I'm saying we can ask him what his capabilities are, how soon he can address it. He's in the room. Call the vote. Call the vote. Okay, the vote has been called. I had more to say, but I can't now. So. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> Phew. All right, everyone in favor of awarding the contract to CSI and uh, getting this taken care of once and for all, or not for all, but once now. All in favor? Opposed? Three to two. In favor? The last item, and I know this is a lengthy meeting and uh, it's kind of a shame, but we just had a lot of business to take care of and uh, some of it uh, certainly open to a lot of discussion. Our final action item is to consider approval of an assessment adjustment uh, based on the CPI report. And uh, I think uh, the way I'd like to do this is to have a discussion hopefully as brief as possible and concise as possible and then to move on to a motion one way or the other a motion to uh, raise the assessment or a motion not to raise it and vote on it i make the motion that we raise the assessment okay we got that quick second we have a second so now we can go into discussion on the motion. I, I want to talk about it, if I may. Oh, you certainly may. The floor is yours. Uh, when I ran for this board, I, I, I talked a lot about not raising assessment. And, uh, but I believe at that time, everyone I talked to I did say that 
I did not say that it, we would not raise assessments. You never say never. Uh, by looking at the situation and the funding that we're in, it has become necessary not simply because we are uh, short at this moment, but we, uh, everything's going up, folks. Y'all know that as well as I do. And through the last several years, we haven't addressed some of these situations. And what we're talking about doing is a very, very minimum assessment. Um, and I feel in my heart that it was necessary to do this to keep Fort Clark, the facility that we all love and we all respect, and that's the reason why I made this a motion to accept this. And I take full responsibility for it. Thank you, John. Deborah? Well, I, I have been into the financials. We have put some things into place. We have hired Mr. Andrew Smullen as a CPA, hoping he's gonna guide us in the way we need to go. We have also hired a collections person, Mr. Guzman. We have also put an attorney on a retainer to do some foreclosures. I personally would like to see these guys have a chance to help our, our income before we actually put more cost on our membership. That's the way I feel about it. And as I have been into some of the financials, I have some, seen some things that as a board member, I'm not real happy with. That's all I'm saying. Did you say financials you were unhappy with? Some of the things I have seen and found, yes. Oh, okay. Well, I think for sure that we can do a better job of taking and of knowing what we're spending and knowing what we're going out. And I think that's the reason why that we hired somebody to help us with that. Thank you. We are going into a situation where we're spending a little extra money and hopefully the lawyer, the bookkeeper, CPA, everybody can stabilize this thing and we won't never have to do this again. But I don't think that we're asking for a tremendous amount of burden on anybody. All right, uh, Bill? Well, I think that, you know, we, uh, I'm with John. Um, I think we have to look at this in current terms, current days, where we are right now. What these other gentlemen who were mentioned, this is Part, part of this is going to be down the road. We don't know today what the problems are that they're finding, but we need to have the revenue now. Now, like John said, once we get through this year we, uh, and into next year with these new policies and these gentlemen who are working on it, we may find that, okay, now we're in good shape. We don't have to raise or any rates. But right now, where we are, we need to. I mean, you, can, you people who live out in the back area, Rio Grande raised their rates. Gasoline at the gas station is up. The city or the county is looking at raising taxes. These are all things that affect us. We've got to get a handle on it now so that when the time comes, we're not in a deeper hole. And that's why I think we need to raise it now. Now, this may be the last one, and we didn't raise it, I think, what, three years? 
2015. And prices Three. have been going up since. Insurance going up. You know, it's a reality, folks. We need to have some money to work with. And this is the way we have to do it, and we have to do it now. For, for the next fiscal year, this would go into effect, what, in October? You know, that's my point. Maria. Well, I do not agree with increasing our, our rates. Um, not just because I don't want to pay more money, but because we have so many things going on with our finances that we have actually no idea where our money is. And um, I can say very, very uh, confidently that since I have attended a board meeting, probably three years now worth of meetings, I have yet to attend a meeting where someone says, our financials are completely accurate and there are no issues with the reports you're receiving today, board of directors. And even to this day, right now, when I did look at the financial statements that were provided to us in our read ahead packages, there were still discrepancies. And I know Debbie doesn't want to talk about them, but I mean, I don't feel like at this moment we're fiscally responsible. I really just don't. If we're if we are batting our eyelashes at having to pay, um, I'm just throwing the an estimated number about five thousand dollars or so of late fees on our electricity bills, and we just bat our eyelashes to that, I think that's an issue. And you know, that's not us being fiscally responsible. So for us to punish our membership who pays their dues regularly and on time. Um, by telling them, well, you know, we might have more forecasted expenses. Uh, we, we obviously don't know where our financial reports really are. Yay, we've got a CPA now. That's great. But I'd like to see exactly what our financial reports really are. And I'd like to give him an opportunity, along with uh, Mr. Guzman, who's been taking the back assessments that people haven't been paying, uh, which apparently you're doing a great job with that. That's great. But, you know, we've got all this trickling money everywhere that we haven't collected, and the people who decide they don't want to pay assessments, well, then they're just going to keep not paying assessments, while the people who are paying them get to pay more. And that's just, that's not right, especially if we can't account for every penny that we currently have. We are not punishing our people that live on the poor. We have a unusually low assessment rate compared to many HOAs, but uh, also I'm curious, uh, Maria, uh, I assume you have re taken copies of our past audits and examined and studied those? I have, yes. Okay, and you still have, don't have any idea of our financial status with those audits done, signed off on by an auditing firm and a CPA? Every single report we have ever received since I've attended a meeting and since I've read an auditing report and all that, every single one of them says, well, you know, this you, You've already correct. stated that. We're talking about the audits now, not and the I'm monthly saying, financial statements. I'm saying, no, I do not feel like we know where our money goes currently. And even though the auditing firm says otherwise, we do not know where every penny of our money is. There are people and businesses who budget to the penny and know exactly where every penny of their money is. And as a large corporation, HOA, whatever you want to call us, we should know where every single penny is going. And we cannot be accountable for that to anybody to this second. We can't say, your assessments go to X, Y, and Z. We cannot say that. And I don't think that's fair for us to ask for more money if we can't even account for what we've already got. Okay, well, if you look at the financial statement, you'll see uh, basically where the assessments go, all the expenses that are paid there. But going, uh, as Bill pointed out, during the past three years our operating costs have gone up and we don't need financial statements even to tell us that fuel costs have gone up, electricity has gone up, insurance has gone up, and is going to continue to go up. Uh, there's also uh, on the horizon maybe some surprises on insurance that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, if we look at the audits, the audit for fiscal year ending October 1st, 2000, or September 30th, 2015, uh, showed a cash and cash equivalent balance of $253,717. Uh, 
for the same uh, peer audit ending September 30th, 2017, our most recent audit, showed the cash and cash equivalents to be $131,752, a decline of $121,965. And this is money that we know exactly what it is. It's money that we have in the bank. So we had a decline over three years there of 100, almost $122,000. If you go back to, uh, uh, further back uh, to September 30th, 2013 audit, the cash balance was 312767 So we've been experiencing a steady decline. That alone is a red flag to me. And although we have taken cost-saving measures, some of them may sound or appear, depending on how they're presented to people, to be uh, more cost savings than they actually are by pointing out that we've reduced our staff. Our maintenance staff has been reduced by five workers, I believe. But then what you have to take into consideration, we just talked about a landscape contract. So we're outsourcing it, and that might be slightly less than the cost of hiring five additional people, but we don't save the entire salary from those five people. That money's being diverted somewhere else for the most part. And we live in an inflationary economy in this city, or in this state, and in this country. And we have to recognize that. And I don't think, hopefully, there aren't many of us that are still operating on the same income that we had three or four or five years ago. And I know our expenses are not the same as they were. And, and as pointed out, while well, our members had your electricity raised 18.5%, well, that tells you something. They're a very large cooperative company, which isn't entirely different than our organization, felt a necessity to make a great increase. The increase that we're talking about here, if it were to be $2 a month, and I say if, yeah, is an actual increase of about 5.7% as opposed to the 18.5% Rio Grande had to do. But also, our electricity went up all where uh, we receive it from Rio Grande. The only other th comment I would make, that the adjustment would be in line with the uh, declarations in consideration of the uh, consumer price index from June 2015 as opposed to June 2018. Those calculations would indicate an increase of uh, $2.28, which we would round off to either $2 or $1, depending on what the board decides, or $0. Just uh, as a matter of curiosity, and our board meetings are different, and I was uh, very surprised nobody came up and commented during that opportunity but how many of you after hearing all this discussion and, and different points being made up here how many of you are uh, against any kind of an assessment increase would you show your hands please are you against against it i'm against yeah okay how many are for it thank you it was pretty brave of me, wasn't it? Uh, all right, I appreciate everybody's point of view and everybody's argument. We all have good points. The other thing, the reason, there's one last reason I put out for doing it. At this time, we print coupon books for many members that uh, pay uh, monthly uh, with the coupon, and those books go out October 1st. And so they got to know what the assessments are. If we were to wait and do the uh, change in November or December and then have to print new coupon books, send them out, uh, there would not only be the additional cost, there would be the confu confusion that would be created with a lot of folks who first got one coupon book and went paying this one. Now oh, here's another coupon book. So it avoids any confusion there. Also, the budget process is being take, uh, in place, being uh, taken and done by uh, 
Andrew and Richard, and they need to know what are the assessments going to be for next year in order to have a budget in place. Uh, there's, I don't know if Andrew wants to say anything about that, but that's probably going to reverse itself in the coming years, but for this year we need it. Someone want to call for a vote? I call for a vote. Now, we have motion is to increase the membership assessment by two dollars regular assessment residential assessment and family recreational assessments by two dollars mr president for every uh, unless i'm mistaken the motion was simply to increase consider he did not he did not no he did not put forth a motion for the exact amount no, I have that's it. what we're doing right now uh, no, we can't my apologies bill i'll make the motion yeah, but the amount. Okay, the motion on the table to consider the... I made, uh, I made a motion. Do you withdraw that motion? I'll withdraw that motion. Okay, that motion Two. has been withdrawn. Does the second person that seconded agree to withdraw that motion? I agree. Okay, that motion is gone. Now, can we have a motion? Uh, I make a motion that we increase assessments for regular assessments, residential assessments, and family recreational assessments by $2. Per month. Per, per month. Per month. Per membership. Yes. 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 Per membership. Okay. Uh, I think we've had adequate discussion. All those in favor? Well, we didn't discuss that motion. That specific motion we didn't discuss. What do you think we've just been discussing up here for the last half hour? We we've been discussing whether or not raising to raise them. them. We didn't All right, talk what would about you like to price. say, Maria? Well, if I'm forced to have to discuss raising a specific amount, it's not going to be two dollars. It, I think a dollar is reasonable. If we're going to tell people you have to pay more, I don't think we just say, "Oh yeah, let's do the two dollars." We didn't discuss a rate. We discussed the subject of raising them. You didn't have the uh, memo where it was two dollars in your memo. My memo says one dollar or two dollars. Okay. All right, fine. So your uh, your position is to raise it one dollar. If you're forcing us to have to do this, yes, one dollar, not two dollars per membership. Okay. I don't like the word forcing. Well, you, you, this really is forcing us. No, no, it's not. No, it's not it's reality. Reality. Where you want. We're talking reality here. I live in reality as well. Okay, but, but then you're not, not being forced. You to do anything, uh, and we're not. I don't know what term you used a while ago. It suits my term, but we are not punishing. Uh, okay, our Mar Maria's position. The motion is to raise the uh, assessments by two dollars per month for regular recreational, family recreational, and residential assessments. Maria's position is she's against that, and uh, I guess we'll accept what. Is suggesting we change it to one dollar. Yes, that's what I suggested. Okay, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. No. All right. Any other comments or discussions by any other directors? Well, we have a motion for two dollars. Yes, the motion on the table is to raise it two dollars. Call for a vote. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Three to two. Under new business, I put forward just to get it out there and discuss to schedule a town hall meeting for Thursday, September 6, 2018, at 6 p.m. in the boardroom. So Can we have some discussion or comments? Why would you do that in September before your winter Texans come in who's going to be all mad because uh, you didn't include them in it? We'll include them in January. I think uh, it's time to, people are, uh, can seem to be concerned of a small handful of people on the uh, social media so much, it's time to let them come and express it to the members and we do want to take in the winter Texans and give them all the input in the world but we don't necessarily need to exclude our other year-round members and make them sit by and wait till that long but I, I would okay. hope to have one uh, 
probably two or three a year, at least one or two of them, including winter Texans. And exactly what are you wanting to accomplish with these town hall meetings? Just information. What I want to accomplish is to get a feel for what the membership that uh, will show up to the meeting, what their concerns are, what, uh, what they want to see happen, what they don't like happening, and to clarify some information. There is so much misinformation being pushed out there. This gives them an opportunity to come in and say something and uh, get their questions answered. Is there any way we could do just a Fort Clark instead of spreading everything on Bracketville voice or whatever it is that we could sign into just strictly Fort Clark membership somehow? Well, we've got uh, some ideas. I have some ideas that uh, I was going to announce in the executive session, but it doesn't have to be secret. So I, I'll answer your question with that right now. Because of that, because of this tremendous amount of misinformation and, and rumors that are being sent out there. We even have uh, members that they, they seem to want to rely more on what somebody on the uh, Bracketville, whatever it is, uh, social media site that coming directly to the association is I intend to put out a message from the fort on a fairly regular basis in the HQ dispatch and on the Fort Facebook page uh, addressing many of these issues and do it on a regular basis. So are you talking about speaking on behalf of all the board or are you talking about speaking on behalf of Mr. Lawrence's office? I don't understand what you said. Well, I'm, I'm asking like with this, well first of all with the town hall meeting I agree that it needs to be done later like in November as opposed to doing two, one in September and one in January apparently. Um, that first week in September is the beginning of school programs for a lot of things uh, that children are involved in. So parents are going to be doing all of those you things. You suggest with another date, September 13th, a week later? I'm suggesting something in November when you can have both groups of people that you're... Let's do both. Yeah. What are you talking about? Let's do both. both. September, November, January. Well, I'm not going to be able to go to all people, these things. So It'd be I, nice I, to and do them quarterly, really. Meeting, really. But quarterly is fine. But yeah, do them often. But yeah, for that town hall meeting, it should be where everybody can go. But that week is a bad week for parents, and I can tell you that. Now, as far as the Facebook stuff is concerned, it doesn't matter what message you put out. There's always going to be a collective group of people that are going to have opinions, and they're going to post it wherever they want. That's just how America works. As far as us, this board, it was made very clear via the, that dispatch that it doesn't matter what we post because it doesn't reflect the whole board. So I would have an issue with you, Mr. President, sending out messages on behalf of the board when you don't speak for the whole board as far as the specific opinions of whatever it is. Now, I'd be more comfortable if Mr. Lawrence is addressing some of these issues in his dispatch, that's fine, but you, you made a really big stink about it's the two Facebook pages that already exist for board members, and... Um, and I don't think it's now appropriate to say that you can Maria, speak for all Maria, you're of against us. it. That's, I've got the message, okay? okay yeah. But it's, I think that it works both ways. I, I think that, uh, Ms. Perkins, you need to be careful answering things that come in to questions to the Fort Clark and, and you answering them on your own. I think that they should be read. We should make a decision on them and not just one one board member. Okay, I would like, thank you, I'd like to comment that most organizations of this type have a message from the president or the CEO that goes out on a monthly basis. Uh, I did this when I was president of the St. Paul Board of Realtors went out on a monthly. The Real Grand Electric has a magazine that goes out. You have a Facebook page that you have plenty to say on. And this 
Although I may not speak for the board, I will be responsible for whatever I say on it is accurate and factual, not opinions, not speculation or conjecture, but facts. Only the facts, ma'am. So you don't have to be concerned about that. And if I put something out that are not is not factual or is misinformation or wrong, I can be subject to being called on it. Okay. Now what, let's get back to what the we had here for the uh, town hall meeting. As long as you're going to do multi town hall meetings. Let's start with September 6th, period. Okay. Uh, your alternative suggestion, Maria, is November? Yeah, I would suggest November. That way you get both groups. You want the people to wait till November in order to have any say, okay? Uh, any particular day in November? How about election day? <laughs> no. <laughs> all the calendars are all the calendars are coming out now. I mean, you can you can have it whenever you want. We don't have to all go, do we? No. No. Okay. Well, well, that was another question I had. As far as a town meeting or a town hall, whatever you want to call it. Are, are the board going to be up there to answer individual questions or, or what are you really I hope so your structure I guess is what I'm asking for the structure will be a town hall structure okay. yeah. there'll be a moderator and the board of directors sitting there to field questions uh, a, a member may come up and say I have a question for you Debbie or a member may come up and say I don't care who answers this or a member okay. may come up and say I want to hear from each one of you what you think of this well, I just think the membership needs to know so they can start their questions now. <laughs> okay. Um. So, we have a, one suggested date is September 6th. Another suggested date is November. Maria? Oh, I don't have a suggested date. I need to sit down and look at it. So. But I think we should have one in September, in November. Okay. We should have several good into the year. Yeah, I think September and then maybe January when all the winter Texans are back. When they're back, settled in, the holidays are over, then we can have another one. People are melting October to me, so maybe so, that's better than September. Um, if we done one in if we done one in October, then we could have another one in January. Yeah, January. And then all the winter Texans would be. That's what back. I'm saying, yeah. yeah. Let's go with October, possibly. Okay, you want October rather than uh, September. September. Yes, September's an awful busy month. It doesn't make me any different. How about October 31st? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're really wanting to jinx it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, how about the 11th? That's a Thursday. Is there, is it October 11th that's the problem or Thursday that's the problem? It's a Thursday. If it's a Wednesday, I can do it. Friday? Night. Well, Wednesday doesn't work well either. That's a big church night, I believe. That's right. October 15th, a Monday? October 15th, Monday work? You know, this is a business meeting, so let's pick a day and do it. October the 18th? That's a Thursday. That's, That's a Thursday. That's also the day after your regular meeting. Regular meeting. we got a meeting on the 17th, so. Yeah. 23rd would work. I think we should get to the week before, so like the... The 23rd, oh, October. The 9th? <coughs> yeah, the 9th, October 9th, then. Over the 
people would be off of work, they would have the opportunity whether they show or not. Well, you can delay your meal. You're not that hungry. You know, it's strange. Maybe you could bring food. I could. Yeah. All right, we'll do it October we'll have 9th. October the 9th. All right. What time? Six o'clock. Uh, the next... I'm going to, I'm calling, asking, pleading for members uh, to volunteer to serve on the election committee. In September, the board of directors is charged with appointing uh, five members to a uh, election committee. It's called for by our uh, new bylaws. And so I'm also going to ask each director to do their best to come up with one uh, nomination for that committee. But in the meantime, we want any and all members that are willing to uh, serve to sign up. And I believe there's a sheet in the back uh, that you can sign up on with your contact information and name. And uh, we'll try to get a message out to the general membership uh, for them to volunteer also. Uh, at this point, we're down to the C on new business, the executive officer's uh, budget development update. And Mr. President, as you can well imagine, it's very difficult to formulate a, a, a budget unless we know things like, uh, do we have to rehire maintenance employees, or are we going to outsource, or what is the contract for this or for that? So we have begun the budget development process, but I would anticipate that we would present to you in the first week of September the draft, our recommendation for the budget, and then you could call a workshop uh, and then uh, uh, be able to rule upon it uh, on the meeting of September. Thank you. Okay, the... Uh Next step is we're going to adjourn into an executive session. Unfortunately, that one may end up being involved in long too, and I don't want to ask you uh, poor folks to endure that. This has been a very long meeting, longest one I've had. I usually hold them an hour, hour and a half, but as you can see, we had a lot of business and some controversial ones to take care of. So I think most of us board members will hang around here five, ten minutes to allow you to come up and chew our ear off, tell us whatever you would like to, and uh, then from there we'll go into executive session. So this uh, meeting is officially adjourned at 11.50 a.m.
Okay, it is now 2.15. We have finished the executive session. Are we convening the regular session before Clark Springs? Your mic is not working. Oh, the mic's not working. That's okay. Can we hear it? I can hear it. Well, but I don't know. Can the camera hear it? Hear it? Yeah. The video may not hear it, so yeah. Well, it's turned off. Yeah, that's all. Just speak real loud. There you go. Now yeah. you're on. Testing. Four. One, two, three. Yep. It's on. Uh. Okay, it's 2.15, we're reconvening the regular session of the Fort Clark Springs Association Board of Directors meeting for August 15th. We just completed an executive session wherein we covered several topics. We had an update from our attorney, Todd Durden, on the process of collections and enforcement of those collections. Uh, we had a presentation from the uh, insurance broker, Warren Blush, uh, for our new general uh, policy comprising of comprehensive liability uh, coverage. And uh, I believe the board uh, will accept that. All those in favor of accepting the proposal from Warren Blush Insurance, please indicate. I don't really think so, but we can. You can make a motion. Now that may have some differences in some costs because he's going to review a few things also. Well, he is, and uh, it doesn't really uh, constitute any kind of major change, and in, in he's our broker. And I guess I'll put it this way. Can I have a motion that we go with the insurance as presented and obtained for us by our insurance broker, Warren Blush? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the proposal that we were given in our I'll briefing. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we also uh, took in under consideration a enforcement assessment proposal against a member who uh, confronted a staff employee, actually two of them at their home with abusive language and threats and uh, we would like a motion to assess an enforcement uh, assessment of $200 against that individual. I make a motion that we enforce an assessment to the individual in the amount of $200. Second that a motion. Okay, all those in favor? This passes unanimously. I would also uh, make a quick note that uh, the uh, member was here earlier but did not stay for the session in which he was invited to uh, stay for it, but presented his uh, defense in a written form. So we then uh, discussed our executive officer's upcoming uh, contract uh, employment and that's in the midst of negotiations between the executive officer and board of directors so outside of putting you on notice that it has been done there's no more to say on that is there anything I've forgotten here I make a motion to adjourn I'll second we have a motion to adjourn and second did I cover everything that we well, we did make note that we talked with the attorney. Okay, okay so we're covered. The next meeting is September 19th at 9 Okay, the next board meeting, I rely on my vice president, Bill, is well, I'm just reading sep <laughs> September 19th at 9.30 a.m. Because it's wrong, I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> Thank you all for, for hanging in there. This has really been a long one, but we had a lot of tough issues and subjects to deal with and we did it so thanks again
I guess we need to look at it. Oh, I got one. Okay. They did it one year. Okay, so we'll have to look at it. I don't think it's going to be any changes. 